The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was a heartbreaking and depressing experience, a true teardropper as we slowly but surely puzzled together what horrible events truly transpired in Hyrule 100 years prior, and just what was at stake in the present. The tragedy of Princess Zelda, King Rome, and the appointed champions deeply touched all of us. But this was nothing new in the Zelda series. So could the Zelda team with a darker than Majora's Mask story this time go all the way and take the life of either Link or Zelda, or perhaps both of them, and that we will witness this happen? If so, then it would be a serious first. Well, if we don't count the Hero of Time's fall against Ganondorf, resulting in the creation of the Downfall timeline. Permanent irreversible deaths of key supporting characters is no new concept to the Zelda series, as we've seen them in Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, The Wind Waker, and of course Twilight Princess. Good examples here are the Guardsmen in Hyrule Castle Town and the Sages in Ocarina of Time, though this one is debatable. Others would include the death of Mikau the Zora Cultist in Majora's Mask, the death of King Daphnis no Hans in Hyrule in the climax of The Wind Waker, and the killing of the Sage of Water in Twilight Princess. Despite the great loss in these four instances, they pale in comparison to the apocalypse which took place in Breath of the Wild, and of which traces are scattered around Hyrule. This is shown for the abandoned trekking wagons and the many ruins that scream death of innocent souls. For us though, there are only five deaths that truly matter and are named. These would be King Rome Bosphorus Hyrule, Mipha, Daruk, Revali, and Urbosa, who were all killed by monsters under the influence of malice. All of these people died, but their souls returned as spirits 100 years later to support Link in his quest to rescue Princess Zelda and finally destroy Ganon. Even so, the entire 100-year wait would have been unnecessary if it wasn't for another near-death situation, namely, the Hylian Champion. Link's fall is no doubt the climax to the most important story plot point found in Breath of the Wild, namely that of the lost memories, Princess Zelda, her character development, and with it her relation to Link. Throughout the memories of Breath of the Wild, we see Zelda go from loathing Link, as he's capable of fulfilling his duty and wielding the Master Sword while she isn't, to have a complete turn of heart and begin to care about him after he saved her from the blades of the Yiga clan. They care for each other and talk, joke, ride, struggle, and after the calamities return, fear and grief together. There is laugh. There are tears, but most importantly, underneath the surface there is love, and it's the feeling Zelda has for Link that in the end result in the victory at her Tenno Fortress. Here, surrounded by guardians, Link was about to be dealt the final blow and fulfill his duty to protect the princess with his life. When Zelda, unwilling to accept the sacrifice and out of love, finally managed to unlock her sealing power. Unfortunately, Link right after succumbed to his wounds, though felt fulfilled as he sacrificed his own life so that the princess and the last hope of Hyrule could live. But Link didn't die, and at the first sign of life, Zelda ordered the Sheikah to bring Link's mortally wounded body to the medical facility at the Shrine of Resurrection. Anyway, if you want a deep understanding of Link's complicated relationship with Zelda, we highly recommend you check out Nintendo Black Crisis multi-part Zelink theory after this video. Back to our theory. Well then, what can we learn from this? That Link was ready to offer his life to protect the princess, but that Zelda was unwilling to accept this sacrifice? Instead, she seemingly did everything in her might to keep her champion alive. All of this while at the same time risking her own life to stop Calamity Ganon or Malice from getting to the corpse of Ganondorf at the bottom of Hyrule Castle, as seen in the first look trailer for the Breath of the Wild sequel. As we all know, the resurrection of Link 100 years later, subsequent battles, and Zelda's sealing of Ganon resulted in victory and what seemed as the beginning of a new and peaceful life with a proper relationship between the two. The point is, from the moment Zelda had her turn of heart after being rescued from certain death, the bond between her and Link only grew stronger. Though there is one piece to the puzzle that is often overlooked, namely that Zelda's feelings for Link are much stronger and long-lasting than Link's, who not only recovered through the 100 years Zelda battled Calamity Ganon, but also lost recollection of his past life. In fact, by the end of the Breath of the Wild, Link has only reclaimed fragments of his former life. The greatest strength of Hyrule 100 years ago and throughout Breath of the Wild was the relationship between Link and Zelda. However, in Breath of the Wild sequel, this strength could become its greatest weakness and might result in the death of Link or Zelda, or in the worst case scenario, both of them. After all, this game is supposed to be darker than Majora's Mask and we all know what is looming over the world of Termina. Death. 
Let's take both of them one at a time, beginning with Link. The hero of Hyrule 100 years ago, 100 years later in Breath of the Wild, and now in its sequel, is a knight of duty who will protect his princess at whatever cost. This involves sacrificing his life for her if necessary, as he nearly did it during the battle for Fort Hatano. No doubt, if put in a situation, the selfless Link would once again put his life on the line so that his Zelda could live. The Link entering the Zonai structure is with the exception of combined Champion and Hylian armor unchanged from the ending in Breath of the Wild. The same can't be said about Princess Zelda, since Zelda 100 years ago and Zelda at the end of Breath of the Wild are two widely different characters. She's stronger, braver and most importantly, more adventurous. All of these, and her will to detach herself from the stiff royal past, are reasons for a sharp cut, a more practical style for her new personality and the task at hand. And since this theory is about death and sacrifice, let's not forget that just like Link, Zelda also put her life on the line to save Link, unaware if she would be able to free her power or be killed by the targeting guardian. Link and Zelda, after 100 years, are inseparable and will never leave each other again. Something the reveal trailer for the sequel to Breath of the Wild showed loud and clear. This might have an impact on the way we will play the game or result in an early seal or death that will say shockwaves throughout players around the world. And the reason for a tragic outcome is likely for a number of reasons. For one, the darker theme of the game is detailed by series producer Eiji Anima to IGN, and the second being that Link and Zelda are the only remaining inhabitants of a kingdom and society that fell over a century ago. But, you know what, we believe Link and Zelda will survive Ganondorf's resurrection underneath the castle, but that one of them could be captured, and that one of them could die later on in the game. Then the remaining half will avenge the death of the other in a very climactic last battle against Malice Ganondorf. Here is why. Throughout the battles against Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time, The Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess, Hyrule was always at stake. But other than that, there has been no sense of fear for the lives of Link and Zelda, you knew that by the end of the game, both of you would stand triumphant and Ganondorf would either be sealed away or killed. But what was the key goal in development of Breath of the Wild? Breaking conventions and subverting expectations. However, in one case, much didn't change. The main story, which played it safe, having Zelda trapped at the top of Hyrule Castle, battle Ganon, and boom, free the princess to aid you in sealing away the King of Evil. With Breath of the Wild sequel setting up Ganondorf as the main villain, or Malice using him as a vessel, things may not go exactly as we're used to. For one, this is the first time Ganondorf will show up as the main antagonist in a direct sequel, and his lust may not be for the Triforce, but rather the lives of Link and Zelda. The other option is that both Link and Zelda escape from the cave, but with Link wielding the Zanai power, which is likely the new gimmick of the game, similarly to the Sheikah Slate in the Breath of the Wild. Speaking of the Sheikah Slate, will it be gone because Nintendo didn't wish to replicate the physics-altering engine in a new location, or perhaps Zelda gets it back? And then, how could an outcome where Link and Zelda work together be darker than Majora's Mask? Simple. A never-ending battle for all surviving communities of Hyrule, or whatever location we head to. A war that will cost the lives of many, and in the end, Link or Zelda, or perhaps even both of them, as they die from the wounds inflicted on them in a decisive confrontation for the future of Hyrule. It would be mentioned many times as a series first, but a very dark ending with Link and Zelda sacrificing their lives for the sake of the future of Hyrule is probably the most romantic and at the same time fulfilling thing the hero and the princess can do. This is especially so after Zelda battled Calamity Ganon for a hundred years straight, and Link did the exact same with a 100 year gap. As with all other theories regarding the sequel to Breath of the Wild, it all comes down to how dark the Zelda team decides to go with this game. With the game thematically already confirmed to be darker than Majora's Mask, there's no doubt that many NPCs we know and love in Hyrule will die in the upcoming battles. The big mystery is if Link or Zelda will fall, and if so, who of them would die first, if they both sacrifice their lives for the sake of Hyrule's future. One final clue that might point to this outcome is the reverse Zelda NES Game Over theme being played in the Breath of the Wild sequel reveal trailer. Is this a sign of the imminent death of Zelda or perhaps Link, since we played as him in a re-envisioned version of Hyrule from the original Legend of Zelda? It could be, but our suggestion, if anyone is to die, would unfortunately be Zelda, but in the most dignified way possible. Since if Link is sealed away, similarly to what was the case in Ocarina of Time with the Master Sword, the roles from Breath of the Wild will be reversed, and Zelda will have to go on a quest to the temples of Hyrule to find a way to free a Link, and thus restore Hyrule's only hope to defeat Ganondorf, the hero with the blade of the evil's bane. 
The price to unseal, though, could be her life. But this motivational factor will be all Link needs to bring down Ganondorf and the Miser's Curse once and for all. And there is our theory of how Nintendo could go even darker than Majora's Mask by making Link or Zelda, or Link and Zelda, to sacrifice their own lives for the sake of their homeland of Hyrule. Well, what do you think? We want to see your reply on this theory in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, make sure to like, subscribe and press the notification bell as we have more Breath of the Wild sequel theories in store for you. Finally, we want to thank all our gracious patrons and in particular royal producers Kenyatta Ali and Bradley Carriage for their support to the realm. You can join them too for some awesome perks by heading over to patreon.com slash commonrealm. And if you want more information then follow us on twitter.com slash commonrealm. And also make sure to check out these videos.